Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. Today we're doing some training from our hub in Chatterton. We're going to look at how you connect an exit button to a standalone keypad. It also applies to proximity readers, anything that's standalone with a, an exit button input. Today we're using the ACT10 keypad. It's the most popular keypad on the market. So let's begin with this one. The first thing you need to do is find the RTE or PB or REX input on the keypad. This is the open collector input on, on the back of the keypad. On the ACT5EM, it's simply called PB. On the KPX1000, for instance, that's called an REX input. And for on the back of the ACT10, like we've got here, it's um, the push button input and the to ground, so push button to ground. So if I was to connect um, two wires to the connector between push button and ground, that would cause the keypad to open. So let's give that a go. I've already made the connector up, so it's nice and easy. And there we go, two wires connected. One wire to zero, one wire to PB. Now let's turn the keypad over. And, and just to confirm it works, if you were to enter a valid code, a code I've already programmed in, you'll see that access granted light comes on. So I put a valid code in, the access granted light comes on. And that confirms that the door's unlocked. So now if I want to mimic that with an exit button, I've got my two wires here. You can see it's an open circuit. And if I close the circuit, I connect the two wires, the green light now says access granted. So when you're connecting in, um, a switch to this, we need to use an open switch, normally open switch. So it's an open circuit going closed causes the keypad to unlock. We'll, uh, we'll cover that on, on how to find out, but most switches have a normally open, normally closed contact on them. We have a selection of push buttons here. The, the popular green dome exit button, um, terminated on the back there. And at the top, you can see the um, normally open, normally closed and common circuits. We have the popular, the Crabtree style button, uh, RTE001S, uh, the, that's the CDV part number, but we also do quite another, quite a few brands who, who do this type style of switch. Then there's the touch free switches, such as this one here. This is from RGL, um, EBNT slash TF dash three. So exit button, no touch slash TF touch free version three. Um, with touch free buttons, they do need powering. There's a separate power connector, the positive and neg. But the, um, as you can see, the output's common normally open and normally closed. So uh, an open switch. And then you have some of the unique switches we do, like the foot operated exit button from RGL. You'd want this on the floor adjacent to the door, or maybe in cash office applications, you would mount it under the security desk. It's a very simple product. Um, normally open here is the two yellow wires. Normally closed is blue, but we'd, we would use normally open. Some exit buttons aren't marked with um, normally open, normally closed and common. Some, uh, you know, like the Crabtree one mentioned before, it just has the L connections because it's um, designed for main circuits, but it's used for low voltage applications as well. So a very simple way to find your open circuit is get a multimeter like our ACT6000 we have here and find the open circuit on the push button. Now I've I've screwed my common probe into it just because you need three hands to do it if you're doing this video. However, this isn't a common, which will always be a, a stable. And then we need to find which is the open circuit. So it's in its normal state, which the one that makes the circuit, this one here, we know that's the closed and normally closed because when you put the two probes together, the, it tells you that it's a closed circuit. So when you put the probes together here, you can see it goes to zero. That means it's a short circuit. And if we do the same again, you can see it's a short circuit. If I put it into the open one and then press the button, if you watch the multimeter, you'll see it's a, it's an open circuit at the moment. And 
it goes closed. So what I'll do is I'll pre-wire this now. I'll put the two black wires in we had on the keypad and connect them to this switch. Now we have our two wires from the keypad, zero to PB, connected to the um, exit button, ground, zero, common, to normally open. So let's have a look, see how it works. Uh, flip the keypad over and hopefully this should work straight away. And there we go. So now if I press the keep if I press the exit button, then you should see the access granted light come on showing that it's worked. And there you go, the green access granted lights on. And it's really locked. So just to recap, on the back of the keypad, you have um, zero volts and PB. And on the back of the exit button, it's a common uh, to normally open. On the, um, on the main switch like this, that'd be common to L1. As I say, as I mentioned over keypads before, we have the ACT5 keypad here, ACT5EM. And you can see with this one here, you simply just have the terminal PB. Now that would bridge to zero volts. Zero volts being the power, main power to the keypad. It's such a compact keypad, you don't have much space. So you'd put a, a bridge. One part of you normally open from the push button would go to PB. And the other half would go to the zero volt connection. Um, and it's the same with the, um, the KPX1000, for instance. This one being an American keypad, they call their exit buttons REX, request to exit. And that would go from REX to ground at zero volts. That's your incoming voltage. Because these buttons are open circuit, you can connect them in parallel with each other. So all you would simply do on a switch, if you put the next switch in the circuit, is connect the common from the first button to the common of the second button. And then you would connect the normally open from the first button to the normally open of the second button. Installers rely on ADI. The ADI projects and technical teams offer a pre-configuration service. Any project size from a single device or to a complex system. Any IP device can be configured from our central hub using our technical and project teams. Having your device pre-configured will save engineers time on site. We can set your IP address, the gateways, and in addition, we'll make sure your device has the latest firmware on board. Simply get in touch with your ADI sales contact or email the projects team. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.